Loho Kako, warm greetings and solidarity from US occupied Hawaii to the attendees of the Third People's Tribunal on Sri Lanka. It's an honor to stand with you for freedom and justice for Ilam Tamils. My name is Kyle Kajihiro. I'm a lecturer in geography and ethnic studies at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I'm also a member of Hawaii Peace and Justice, Koa Futures, and the Oahu Water Protectors, as well as other grassroots groups working to counter US militarization. Although I am not Kanaka Maoli or indigenous Hawaiian, my family history in Hawaii goes back to the late 19th century. As a settler of Japanese ancestry, I feel a strong responsibility to stand with the Hawaiian independence movement. The Kingdom of Hawaii was a sovereign country that enjoyed its independence and diplomatic relations with all other countries until the US militarily backed a white settler coup d'etat in 1893. Hawaii was the first instance of the US employing regime change against another sovereign state. The United States sought a mid-Pacific military outpost from which to extend its military and economic power across the Pacific Ocean to Asia. You could say that Hawaii was the fulcrum of the first US Pacific pivot. Despite successful efforts by Hawaiian nationals to defeat uh, treaties of annexation between Hawaii and the United States, the war with Spain provided the military justification to take our islands as a wartime necessity. Thus, the role of the US military has been hostile to Hawaiian interests ever since the beginning. The US occupation of Hawaii led to massive militarization of Hawaiian lands. Today, the US military has 142 installations, controls approximately 221,000 acres of land, 68% of which consists of the trust lands of the Hawaiian kingdom. Approximately 24% of the island of Oahu is occupied by the US military. The military is trying to mitigate nearly 1,000 uh, 1, contaminated sites in Hawaii. It is by far the largest polluter. Since the 1970s, Kanaka Maoli have struggled to defend their lands and waters and to restore their sovereignty. From 1976 to 1990, the Project Kaho'olawe Ohana led a victorious struggle to stop the Navy bombing of Kaho'olawe Island, uh, which was considered sacred by Kanaka Maoli to the deity Kanaloa of the deep sea. Kaho'olawe is now being restored as a cultural and ecological reserve. Other struggles are ongoing at Makua Valley on Oahu, Pohakuloa on Hawaii Island, Nohili on Kauai, and other locations where the US military still conducts destructive uh, activities. Recently, there was a leak at the Navy's giant and deteriorating Red Hill fuel storage tanks near Pearl Harbor. These tanks hold up to 250 million gallons of fuel and sit just 100 feet above the main drinking water source for Oahu. Contamination in the Navy's water system led to the poisoning of thousands of military families and water users and the displacements of, of tens of thousands of residents from their homes while the water was toxic. After an intense campaign by the Oahu water protectors, Kaohewai, and other groups, and the United Front from all sectors of society, the Secretary of Defense, Austin, finally announced that the tanks would be defueled and permanently decommissioned. However, we are still awaiting plans and definite timelines. Meanwhile, every second that passes is like a ticking of a time bomb over our drinking water. Every two years, the US Navy sponsors RIMPAC, or the Rim of the Pacific, multinational military exercises in Hawaii. It is the largest such training activity. This year, they expect up to 27 countries and approximately 40,000 military personnel participating in training on land, air, and sea. These activities always bring negative environmental and social impacts. RIMPAC is also a venue where the US performs international relations. For example, in the past, China was invited to participate but then was disinvited several years ago. This year, Taiwan may invite, be invited in the role of observer, which is a jab at China. Countries with horrible human rights records have also been invited to participate in RIMPAC, which gives assent to the crimes of these militaries. For example, Indonesia has, been, has become a full participant in RIMPAC 
despite being previously banned due to the atrocities its military committed uh, in East Timor and despite ongoing atrocities in West Papua. Israel is a regular participant despite its crimes ag against um, Palestinians. And Sri Lanka has been a regular participant in RIMPAC despite its crimes against Elam Tamils. So I wanna thank you for making us aware of the struggle of Elam Tamils and of the role of the United States and Sri Lanka in perpetuating these war crimes. Elam Tamils, as well as all people have the right to self-determination and freedom. And we extend our solidarity and aloha to our Elam Tamil relatives struggling to be free. We will help to spread news about your situation and your efforts here in Hawaii and in our work with groups across Oceania and Asia. During our actions against RIMPAC exercises, Elam Tamils will be in our hearts and will be part of our messaging about why RIMPAC must stop and why military expansion in the Indian Ocean must be ended. Freedom for Elam Tamils, freedom for Hawaii, freedom for Guahan, Okinawa, Jeju, West Papua, and all people still struggling to be free. And to close, I just want to share uh, a Hawaiian chant that has inspired me. It's called the Pule Wanana o Kapihe. It goes, E iho ana o luna, E pi ana o lalo, E hui ana na moku, E ku ana kapaya. It roughly translates into what is above will go down, what is below will rise up, the islands will unite, and the walls of the structure or the peoples will stand. Aloha and solidarity. <laughs>